back in the shed with the R34 again. Um, in this video, I'll be fitting the front bumper, mounting it properly, and um, setting and adjusting the panel gaps in the front end. Before we get into any of that, this has happened in the last week. Um, yeah, just got the quarter panel sitting on there for now. It's uh, just been loosely trimmed to shape and sort of just sat on the car, test fitting, seeing what needs to be trimmed and adjusted. But um, yeah, it's coming along pretty well. Uh, I'm not gonna talk a great deal about that in this video. I'll be doing a separate video on that. Um, more so just time-lapse, start to finish of the whole job really, um, the main bits and pieces. Pretty happy to be having that coming along now. Um, this side's been an absolute dream to work on in comparison to the other side with all the um, crash damage and all the stuff I had to deal with over there. So yeah, this side's been really good. So yeah, other than that, I've had a couple more parts roll up, so we'll go check them out. So yeah, there's a few things that have showed up recently. So yeah, for the fitting of the front bumper, needed these guys, these took a while to come in. Uh, they're just the extensions that come off the side of the crash bar. <laughs> Um, they've got this little tab here as well uh, that locates the front bumper. It slides into there and holds it up at the front and on the sides. So um, yeah, pretty essential piece to setting the panel gaps and all of that. Um, and then yeah, a few bits over here. So the rest of the black interiors showed up, which is really great. Um, got the sun visors here. They're just the Australian delivered ones. So they've got the English um, SRS warning on them. Someone's decided to draw on them in paint pen, which is freaking awesome. <laughs> uh, no, I'm hoping I should be able to clean that off without damaging the sun visor at all. Um, yeah, obviously the mirror I've had before, the map light I had before, the dome light. Um, yeah, that came in. So that was a bit tricky to find. Um, the only one I found for ages was like 300 US dollars and sure as hell wasn't paying that for one of them. So. Yeah, I hadn't looked for a while and then just chucked an eBay search and that popped up in, I think, Sydney. It was like $80, so yeah, grab that. And um, these guys here were the hardest parts to find, uh, the clips for the sun visors, because nobody ever sells them with the sun visors and trying to find just the clips on their own is an, you know, next to impossible, so yeah. Pretty wrapped to find them. Uh, they got sent out from Turkey. So yeah, thanks to the guy that was selling them. That was awesome. And um, yeah, another major piece of the puzzle. Um, this guy here, obviously, the car itself's currently still automatic. Um, so yeah, pretty essential piece here. Brand new OEM clutch pedal assembly. Um, absolute pain in the ass to try and get a hold of because you can't buy all of this. Yeah, so you can't buy this whole thing just as one unit, which is an absolute pain. Um, so first off, I had to buy the um, the clutch, the actual, you know, lever itself came with the pedal cover on it for the, the late model V-Spec 2 stuff. Um, and then the rest of it, it all had to be bought separately. So the bracket, this spring was separate. There's these two little, um, I don't even know what you pull, call them. It's all like plastic bushings for the spring. So they come in a packet of two. This little plastic bushing in here comes individually as well. The um, clevis pin here, also separate. R clip, I had to source myself. This big bolt that goes through the guts and holds the pedal in, um, that also separate. Um, there's supposed to be a nut on here, which I haven't got yet, but um, yeah, Nissan don't supply that with the bolt. You also have to get that separately. And then also the bolt for the clutch lever adjustment um, or the stopper. So yeah, I haven't got one of those yet, so I'll just, um, I'll probably put a bolt in there. So yeah, absolute pain. So yeah, it's there, got there in the end, pretty happy with it. So um, yeah, for anybody else looking to do a manual conversion or who's after an R34 GT or GTT clutch assembly, um, yeah, good luck. It's it's a bit of work. Um, luckily, Dave from Sleeker Spares did most of the hard yards with this, so you know, massive thanks to him. But um, yeah, not the easiest thing to track down, which is odd, seeing as how you can buy the whole brake pedal assembly as one unit and you can't get that. So um, yeah, anyway, probably get into some actual work. So first port of call, I'll probably um, bolt these extensions down to the crash bar. So yeah, once I've got those bolted to the uh, crash bar, I've got a come up with a solution for actually mounting the back of the bumper up to the um, underside of the, the quarter panel. So what I was thinking of doing is making up a, 
a sheet metal plate that we will eventually get glued into there probably um, and have some welded in captive nuts in it so that when I'm out the bumper up I can just put bolts through the underside of here and there will be that plate in there with the captive nuts and then I'll sandwich everything together nicely. So yeah, that's probably what I'm gonna do for now. Um, I won't glue it in, but I'll make something up and then I'll have you know the ability to actually bolt the bumper up. I'll get to work, hopefully get a bit of that done and then um, I'll whip the camera out when I'm ready to start setting up some um, panel gaps. So yeah, I'll catch you once that's done. All right, so the front end's back on the car. Um, yeah, it's not too bad. Um, I mean, I suppose it's all fiberglass that's been sitting around for more than a year. So there's a little bit of uh, finessing that needs to happen, but um, yeah, for the most part, it's not too bad. So I guess to start off with, um, this is just some damage that happened when it was all shipped, so that'll get fixed up eventually. But yeah, on both sides, there's this uh, gap around the edge of the headlight. Um, I'm pretty much going to attribute that to the mounts being stuffed on the lights themselves because you can it's like hard to do one handed but you can you can sort of push up on it and close that gap up so yeah there's that um, the bonnet gap uh, what do we got here it's, uh, it's pretty decent on this side it's a little bit uh, the bonnet hinges aren't exactly tight so sort of pull it over a bit so yeah, it's not too bad here, it's fairly even. Uh, I'm sort of going for about a five mil gap, ideally. So yeah, this side's not too bad, but then when you come around to this side, see it's really tight up the front, there's a probably not even a millimeter in that, and it opens up towards the rear. And then there's also this pretty big gap up here. Um, so I'd say to start with, there's um, one of the holes up here for the quarter panel or probably even the, the front two. I'll probably um, make them a little bit larger than they are so that this quarter panel can come out a little bit here and then out a little bit there. The rear doesn't need to come out, that's pretty good the where it is. Um, but the, this back side of the quarter panel needs to go up. Um, so I'll need to make some adjustments to the, um, there's a couple of, there's a hole down here and there and then in the bottom of the quarter panel where it bolts to the seal. So I'll have to make some adjustments there to bring this up. Um, as far as the door gap goes, it's... Yeah, you can see that needs to come up about a millimetre. Um, but yeah, the door gap's also a bit large as well, so the whole quarter panel needs to move to the rear of the car about one to two millimetres. Um, up the top it's not actually too bad, it gets a bit wider down the bottom. But um, yeah. And then the front bumper, um, I mean, being that it's fiberglass, you can't really help this, but it, it just sits out a bit. So once I've made that bracket in there, I'll, that'll sort of, you know, pull in and then the bolts will hold it in spot. Um, this one here is sort of the same here. There's a little bit too much of a gap. Like there is supposed to be a gap here, but not quite that much. Like you can sort of see the difference from the top of the door down to here. So that'll need to come up about a millimeter to two millimeters. And then same with this door gap here, it's just a little bit too large. So I'll adjust all of that so that the whole quarter panel can, um, yeah, scoot towards the rear of the car a little bit. But, um, I mean, it's all fairly minor stuff, really. Um, the actual door to the quarter panel is pretty good. Um, I think the other side's not as tight as that. You sort of see just in there, Right in here, there's a bit of a, you can see it sort of comes out a bit where the door sits proud of the of the actual quarter panel. So yeah, I'll see. I'll, once I've made all the other adjustments, I may just need to put some like um, a little sheet, a bit of rubber on the, um, there's like a, a flat section behind here that actually sits hard up against the bulkhead. So I might have to just run like a thin strip of rubber on that just to push the center of the quarter panel out. But um, yeah, I mean, they're all fairly minor adjustments, really. Um, the headlights are gonna be a little bit tricky. I mean, ideally I need new headlights because um, the, the mounting tabs in the sides are all stuffed. Um, and then, yeah, obviously the tabs on top are all messed up as well, but 
I think from memory it's north of two and a half grand for a pair of headlights. So yeah, we'll see if I can get by with these for the time being. So yeah, I'll have a bit of a mess around. I'll um, adjust some mounting holes and try and get this a little bit better. And then um, yeah, probably pick this up once I've made some adjustments. And there it is. Um, pretty bloody wrapped with that. It's starting to look really good. Um, yeah, so I got the rear end a bit higher now. So the coming off the door to the edge of that quarter panel is pretty level now. So let's close this gap up nicely. And then if we come down and look at that body line, well, it's a bit hard to see because of the lighting, but um, yeah, that body line's nice and in line now. And the guard gap to the doors, nice and uniform. Looks real nice. Um, for whatever reason, the bonnet wants to sit a bit high at the edges here. And it's fully tightened down and everything. And it's just, if I push down on my thumb, it, it sort of sits down a bit. But yeah, I'm not sure what that is, whether the fiberglass might have just sort of relaxed a little bit on these edges um, yeah anyway that's a bit odd but um, yeah the bonnet gaps looking pretty nice now down the whole side the bars pretty well lined up perfectly headlights still a bit funny but you know you get that with these things for the time being um, this side here is out a little bit there's still a bit of tension on this glass so I'm gonna need to trim the bar a little bit in here as well because I can't if I push on it here I can't get this gap to go any further so I think it's hitting up against the actual inside of the quarter panel but um, other than that once that's trimmed a couple of millimeters that'll go in nicely and then same deal here the um, the uh, bonnet gaps nice the whole way up managed to get this to rise up and coming off the door to theirs bang on same deal with that gap there and that that body lines good and it's about as close as it can get so there it's about as close as it can get without the door actually rubbing on it when it opens and closes so, so yeah that's pretty nice and then same deal with the bonnet on this side it sort of just sits up just a touch here so I'm not sure what the deal is with that, but um, yeah, other than that, everything's pretty well spot on. So yeah, real nice being able to get a good look at it with the front and the rear sitting on the car. Looks real nice. I mean, this side doesn't have any wheels on it, but uh, yeah, absolutely wrapped with the progress lately. Car's starting to match the image I've had in my head for a while now, so yeah, it's coming along real good. Can't wait till the bodywork's all done and then it's ready for paint. Yeah, it'll be a bit of a milestone moment once it's ready for paint. But um, yeah, with a bit of luck, the wheels should be here in the next, I'd say, three to four weeks. Um, there's about a three month ETA on the wheels, so yeah, I'm hoping to see them fairly soon. But, yeah, as far as this video goes, I'm probably gonna leave it there. Um, not a real great deal to do at the moment other than um, finishing off the other rear quarter panel so um, you know, I'm about halfway through editing that video at the moment so hopefully I'll have uh, something ready for next weekend if I pull my finger out and actually you know do some work so um, yeah not quite sure how the order of things will go coming up um, so the next video I'll be finishing off this passenger side quarter panel um, but once the back end's completely done, I'm not 100% sure where I'm going to start next. Um, I've been tossing up whether or not I want to buy a rotisserie because uh, I really want to do the underside of the car and doing that on jack stands would just be an absolute nightmare. So um, as far as I can tell, they're about 1000 to $1,500 depending on where you buy them from online um, plus freight. So I might just bite the bullet and do that and then I'll be able to do the whole underside of the car. Um, yeah, sort of similar to what uh, Broken Sylvia did. I'd really like to do the um, Gravitex body seal underneath and then color code it to the car. So yeah, for those who haven't um, watched one of the previous videos where I spoke about paint briefly, the car will be going QM1 white. Um, so yeah, I'd, be, I'd really like to do the um, QM1 
color match on the underside of the car. And then once I've got the engine and everything out, then I can do the engine bay as well. Um, so I'd like to do the floor before the engine bay. So. Well, I guess once the rear end's finished, I'll probably get to, uh, I might pull the rear subframe out or I'll start on the engine and trans. I'm not 100% sure which one I'll do first, but both of those need to come out at some point. So yeah, I guess I'll start moving on to that sort of stuff. Um, and then I'm also gonna be doing um, the rest of the, like the chassis reinforcement stuff that I'll, um, I've sort of touched on in a previous video. But um, yeah, I got a few nice ideas for stiffening up the chassis and um, little tricks that I'll be able to hide away. So yeah, um, and also, for people that haven't watched all of the videos, um, this is gonna be a track orientated street car. So it's by no means gonna be a, um, a museum piece by any means. Like I'm gonna build it to a high quality, but like this thing's gonna get driven hard on track um, and then driven around on the street and you know, nice Sunday cruises and all that stuff in between. It's definitely gonna get used and abused. So yeah, we've got all that fun stuff to look forward to. But yeah, as far as chassis reinforcement goes, um, yeah, I'll go into a lot more detail in um, some of the coming videos, but you know, there's little bits in here. So I'll go around the strut tower here and spot weld all of that. And then I'm probably gonna chuck a, a triangulated sort of gusset in here with a dimple die in there. Just little bits and pieces like that. Um, you know, might even get some uh, little scales and just add up all the little bits and bobs and because I've had a couple of people message me about weight, um, you know, adding steel into the car, and it's, it's very minimal for for increasing chassis rigidity. Um, it's like, yeah, it's, it's a couple of kilos tops worth of metal, and like, even the seam welding, like, I might even do a little demonstration of that. I'll get two bits of sheet metal, weigh them, and then weld them together, and you can see the difference. Um, yeah, it's very negligible as far as weight gain goes for that stuff, and then, you know, little bits and pieces that I've been lightening up along the way, like um, like the brakes that I'll be running. Um, will be a fair whack lighter as far as unsprung mass goes even. So, um, you know, you've got the nice heavy Skyline stock front brakes here, um, cast rotors and whatnot, and yeah. Um, so these are the front brakes that I'll be running. They're a um, Mitsubishi Evo 8 um, Bremo calipers. So there's an Alfa Omega adapter kit to run these, but um, yeah, fair whack bigger than even the GTR brakes. And um, these are, this whole caliper would be lighter than the single, big single pot that's on here. But yeah, um, so I dare say this big caliper here would weigh less than that. And I'll also be running a um, two piece, um, I'll also be running two piece rotors, the aluminium hats as well. So, um, those coupled with the, the GTR knuckles, which are aluminium. So dropping a fair bit of unsprung mass. Um, so yeah, adding in a few little, you know, brackets with holes drilled in them and dimple dies and stuff and spot welds here and there is not gonna get close to weighing the car down by any means. Um, and this is already gonna be a fairly light skyline because it's, uh, it's only gonna be two wheel drive, obviously. And, um, and yeah, it's all non high cast, so there's none of the Atessa pumps, the ECUs, all the crap that sits in the rear. Um, no extra rack in the back, no hydraulic lines, all of that. So, um, yeah, as far as skylines go, it's going to be on the lighter end, I hope. So I'll probably take it over a Weybridge once it's done. But um, yeah, anyway, just a little food for thought for some of the people that have been curious about adding weight back into the car. So, see, so yeah, I think it's going to be very negligible in the uh, grand scheme of things. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, I've been rambling off long enough and I'd say 75% of people have probably stopped watching by now. So um, yeah, if you're still hanging around towards the end, really appreciate it. And um, thanks heaps to all the new subscribers. Um, you know, the channel is by no means blowing up, but uh, you know, we've probably had a good hundred or so subscribers in the last month or month and a half, which has been really good. So yeah, thanks a lot. And um, yeah, I'll catch you on the next one when I've got some more work to do.